afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you for being here today to listen to us talk about unifying observability, correlating metrics, traces, and logs with exemplars and open telemetry. Um, so before we get started, we just want to take a quick moment to introduce ourselves. Hi, I'm Kritika. I'm a machine learning engineer at Apple. I work with the observ observability team. And my background is in machine learning, data science, and observability. Charlie? Hi, I'm Charlie. Um, I'm a software engineer at Apple. Um, I've been here for about eight years. And um, I'm also a Cortex maintainer. I'm super happy to talk about exemplars today. So um, thanks for coming. All right, um, we'll just do a quick walkthrough of our agenda. So we'll start with a case study and a demo of what we're going to be talking about, and then talk about what exemplars are, and then go into a high-level overview before diving deeper into the details of exemplars and how to set them up. Then we'll talk about the value of using exemplars for your service, and finally open it up to question and answer. So please think about your questions while we talk. Um, so this talk is mainly geared towards um, SREs, developers, operations experts, ML engineers, basically anyone who is interested in improving the reliability and observability of your service. So what we're going to learn today is we're going to learn about what exemplars are, talk about how to enable exemplars with open telemetry, how to configure your Prometheus backend so that you can store exemplars, and finally, how can you visualize exemplars to get the most actionable insights from them? So Charlie, do you want to get us started with the case study? Yeah. Thanks, Kritika. So um, let's imagine that you uh, run this uh, store for selling telescopes. Um, it's your pride and your joy. And this is, your, let's say, your primary source of income. Just by the way, this isn't a real store, <laughs> but just say you had a store that sold uh, telescopes. And um, uh, one day, this happens. Uh, the telescope images aren't showing up anymore, and uh, the prices are all zeros, and um, what does that mean, right? Like, okay, now there's going to be loss of revenue because telescopes aren't being sold. Um, there's, this, this great, there's this degraded user experience now because customers that are coming onto your site can't buy anything anymore. And there's this potential loss of loyalty now because if your website isn't working, what does that say about your telescopes? Um, so the objective here is to be able to quickly um, diagnose and resolve these kinds of critical issues in a systematic way and also a scalable way so you don't have to have like these custom things uh, for resolving the, these specific use cases um, every time they pop up. So let's say you have this uh, dashboard um, and it's a metric for the errors that are happening for your application. Um, wouldn't it be nice if you could have more information on these graphs, like um, these, little, um, these little dots here that told you um, some more information about that request. And what if you could um, highlight that dot and then be able to see more information about that request? Um, and uh, wouldn't it be nice if you can jump directly to that trace uh, for that request and be able to dig into more of what happened in that error. Um, so this is a, an example uh, trace that has all of these spans that talk to the various uh, services that make up this uh, web application. Um, and if we scroll down a little bit and uh, look here, uh, we can see that just from this trace alone, uh, we saw that there's this feature flag thing that was enabled. And um, luckily, I know that there's this feature flag service, and someone had accidentally turned on this product catalog failure. Um, and because it's on now, there's, these, there's all these errors. So let's just turn it off and um, go back to that website and then see, oh, OK, it's working now. Um, so think about the amount of time that it took to quickly debug these kinds of issues. Like, if you're looking at a metric, you jump directly to a trace, and now you're, you have all this context-relevant information about this request. And then you can dig into these spans and then look, about, look at what these errors are, and then quickly figure out, OK, there's this feature flag thing. Let's go and try disabling this product catalog failure thing, and then see if that fixes the, the issue. 
Right? Think about if you didn't have uh, this exemplar, what, what would you do to be able to figure this out, especially if you didn't know how everything was connected? So Krithika is going to talk a bit more about how um, uh, exemplars work and kind of do an intro for you guys. All right. Um, Charlie, are you sure you didn't turn on that feature flag? Just by mistake. Anyway, um, so now that we know what exemplars can do for you, let's talk about what exemplars are. So exemplars are specific data points that add uh, richer context into your observability stack by linking metrics to traces and logs. And these traces and logs are stored alongside metrics in exemplars. They essentially allow you to correlate the metrics data to the API calls where these measurements were originally recorded. So when should you use exemplars? So exemplars are great for when you want to troubleshoot anomalies because when you have an, an anomalous data point, you can go from that metric directly to the trace and get all this extra information about what's going on with your system. <clears throat> it also is great for managing high cardinality data because um, it augments your metrics with traces and logs where you get all these details of um, what's really going on. And finally, um, it's great for identifying and analyzing performance bottlenecks, like for example, maybe there's a high latency issue. All of these are very fast and easy to pick up with exemplars. Why should you be using them? Like we said, um, it op offers deeper insights for you to very quickly do root cause analysis. It helps you streamline your troubleshooting to very specific data points because it highlights those data points for you in all the data. And finally, it enhances the observability with richer and more nuanced um, context for system behavior. OK, so now let's talk about what are some of the prerequisites you will need to set up exemplars for your service. So the first and most important thing is instrumentation. You'll have to instrument uh, your service to collect metrics, traces, and logs. And this is very important because this is the step where you'll collect the raw data for your monitoring. You'll need a metrics collection system. And for this, um, you can use the Open Telemetry Metrics SDK to collect, process, and export metrics. And you can store them in Prometheus. You'll need a tracing system. And similarly to metrics, you can use the uh, Open Telemetry Traces SDK to collect and export traces. And you can store them in Jaeger. For logging, you can use um, OpenSearch to ingest all of that rich additional logging information that you need from your service. And finally, you need a visualization system, which you can use to query and visualize your exemplars so you can see the metrics, traces, and logs in one place. And uh, Grafana and Prometheus are great uh, tools for this. They both offer it uh, out of the box. Um, all right, so Open Telemetry is a vendor agnostic solution for collection, uh, processing, and exporting of metrics, traces, and logs, and um, it offers uh, you know, support in a variety of languages, some of them we have listed here, for, uh, for using exemplars. So no matter what your tech stack is, you can use uh, Open Telemetry to set up exemplars for your service. And um, the versions listed here, they are, uh, they are the base versions that you will need to uh, get exemplars out of the box. All right, um, now Charlie, do you want to talk about the high-level overview? Yes. Thanks, Kritika. Um, so this is a generic kind of flow for how uh, telemetry can flow through your systems with uh, exemplars. On the left-hand side, you'll see a server that's instrumented with open telemetry. It's exporting these uh, telemetry to the open telemetry collector. And then that collector is processing it and then exporting it to the various backends that support that telemetry type. For example, Prometheus could be used for storing your metrics and exemplars. Open Search could be used for storing your logs. Um, and Jaeger could be used for storing your traces. Um, these are just open source, off the shelf components that you can set up. Um, and you don't need to pay for anything. You can just set it up yourself. Um, and then on the right side, you'll see the visualization tool um, to, to be able to query all these different uh, telemetry types um, and then be able to link them for you. Um, so under the hood, uh, what does an exemplar actually look like? Um, on the left-hand side, you'll see a, an example metric. This is in Prometheus. Um, it's just a latency metric, um, has a histogram. 
And um, on the right side, you'll see the exemplars that are related to this metric. Um, and in the exemplars, you'll notice that uh, the trace ID and the span IDs are there. So if you're querying the exemplars, all you need to do is pluck those trace IDs out and then and query your tracing backend, and you should have the trace for that request. Um, and uh, fun little Easter eggs here. Uh, the first timestamp is when the first iPhone was released, and uh, the second timestamp is um, when this talk is happening. So. Um, so what flags do you actually need to enable um, to get exemplar support? Um, if you're using Prometheus, you'll need to enable the exemplar storage flag. Otherwise, if you try to send it exemplars, it'll just discard it. The second flag is the OTLP write receiver feature flag, which allows for accepting these OTLP write requests. If you don't have this enabled, it will also just reject the request. Um, on Grafana, in your data source, to be able to uh, tell um, Grafana where to query the um, tracing backend, you go to your Prometheus data source, and then in that section, there's an exemplar section. Um, you click on where that tracing backend is, as well as um, the trace ID. Uh, so this is like a label that Grafana will use in that exemplar data to be able to query the tracing backend and figure out where that trace is. Um, and so once you have that data source configured, in your dashboard, um, in the, uh, the panel itself, you have to enable this exemplar section. You may have seen this little exemplar section but never turned it on because what's an exemplar? But if you enable it um, and then check a look at the uh, panel now, you'll see these little green dots. Um, and if you hover over them, you'll see these exemplars show up. Um, and then clicking on that view in Jaeger UI will take you to the tracing backend that you set up with that trace ID in there already filled in, and then you can view that trace um, pretty easily. Uh, we also talked about logs a little bit. So is it possible to jump from a trace to a log now that we've jumped from a metric to a trace? Well, um, this is what that tracing view looks like in Grafana. Um, and uh, if you wanted to be able to jump from that trace to that log, uh, what you do is you go to that uh, tracing data source, uh, Jaeger in this case, and then you go to this section for trace to logs. So what you do is you say, hey Grafana, this is the logging backend I want to use, um, this is the query that I want to use, and then when I query that uh, logging backend, uh, because my application is instrumented with OpenTelemetry, the logs already have this trace ID in there, and all I need to do is query for all the logs lines that have that trace ID. So let me show you, um, when we enable this, what does that tracing view look like now? Um, if we zoom in a bit, we'll see like, these little links here that say click on the log. Uh, when you click on it, what actually happens is um, it'll make this query to the, the searching backend, uh, or the log backend that you have, um, plug in that trace ID for you, and then now you have all of the logs that are related to that request. Isn't that nice? Um, so that's how you can jump from a trace to a log um, with exemplars. And uh, now I'm going to talk a bit about enabling exemplars in your application. So this is how you would normally instrument your application with OpenTelemetry. First, you import your API and SDKs from OpenTelemetry. You configure the providers for the telemetry types, set up the traces, um, uh, measurement, and logging handler, and then you start recording uh, your um, telemetry. This is very normal um, uh, or, you know, um, typical in um, instrumentation for open telemetry. Um, and then let me show you what it looks like with exemplars. If you notice, there is actually no difference because um, open telemetry creates these exemplars for you out of the box. So that's kind of the nice, really cool benefit of instrumenting your applications with open telemetry. Let me just show you some quick um, examples here of what it looks like in um, code. Uh, in Go, this was what it would look like. You would import your API and SDKs. You set up your providers, create those handlers, start recording. There's nothing really else that you need to do. Like, you don't need to say, do exemplars. It just does it for you. 
And how it works under the hood is that because the API and the SDK um, for traces and the uh, metrics know about each other, when it's creating the recording for that metric, it already knows that context for that trace. And then it can link those two together to create those exemplars for you. Um, here's another example for Python. It's very similar. You do the same imports. Um, you set up the traces the met the, uh, and the, the meters. And then you set up the logging handlers. And then you start doing those recordings. And uh, once you do that, it's the same process. Exemplars should be uh, created for you out of the box. Um, so I'm going to hand it back to Kritika to talk about the value proposition. All right. Um, so now we know what all exemplars can do for you and what they are. So now we want to talk a little bit about what value it adds to your service. I'm going to go through this really quickly. So it offers faster root cause analysis, augments metrics with traces and logs, helps you with efficient use of resources, offers more granular insights into anomalies, and helps you improve mean time to resolve. And overall, it has enhanced your observability. But this means nothing, so we're going to talk a little bit about some examples for each of these. So let's go back to our astronomy um, shop use case. Let's say that one day you observe this like steep spike for um, server latency, and you have an anomaly detection set up already, and the anomaly detection system has notified you that there's an anomaly. Now that you have a notification, you need a way to uh, figure out what to do about it and how to fix it. So exemplars are great because, like we've been saying throughout this talk, you can easily d jump into the trace and get all this extra information about what's going on with error messages and everything, because you can also jump into logs. So that helps with faster root cause analysis. You can perhaps store all the information that you need to uh, root cause an issue in your metrics. But the way you do that is you will need to store them as label value pairs. And the problem with that is you're going to increase your cardinality for the metrics. So exemplars are great here because they help you only store the essential information you need as part of the metrics. And then it augments these metrics with traces and logs to get all the extra information you need for uh, system behavior, performance analysis, uh, root cause analysis, anything. And the added benefit is that you end up storing lower cardinality metrics. So you are using your resources a little more efficiently. But um, storing exemplars does come with a little bit of cost overhead. The good thing is there are several sampling policies that you can use to sample your traces, because exemplars is you know, the metric plus the trace ID or the span ID. So by sampling a percentage of traces from your service, um, you're also reducing um, your cost overhead for resources. Um, in multi-service setups, like the one that we saw with the astronomy shop, um, it's great, exemplars are great because uh, they offer more granular insights into multi-service issues. Um, especially, they help you understand how different services interact with one another uh, in case of a failure. So when we saw the product catalog issue uh, just you know, the beginning uh, during the demo, we saw that it also gives you like latencies of all other um, services that the data flow hit. Um, that way, you can uh, get more insights into how they are related. And you know, we've been talking about all of this. It's kind of very clear right now. It's obvious that it does help you uh, reduce mean time to resolve. But you can come and tell me that, hey, I can store metrics, traces, and logs separately. Um, probably get the same insights from just storing them separately. Why do I need exemplars? That's true to a certain extent. You do get the same insights, but you have the manual overhead of having to go figure out and link these metrics, traces, and logs together. So exemplars are great because they are a one-stop shop solution for you to link these metrics, traces, and logs with one another. And they also offer easy traceability from metrics to lo uh, traces and traces to logs. So um, just general uh, triaging becomes much easier. And finally, um, it enhances the overall uh, observability of your system uh, because it has now given you a more uh, nuanced insight into what the system behavior is. OK. So we're going to re recap everything that uh, we've learned so far. So we learned about what uh, exemplars are. We learned about how to enable them using open telemetry. We learned about how to configure our Prometheus backends to store these exemplars. 
And finally, we learned how to visualize them in the best way to get the most actionable insights. The idea of this talk was to essentially motivate the idea of using exemplars for the future services that you build, because they truly are very powerful um, you know, for system behavior analysis or performance analysis, uh, root cause analysis, as we've seen. And we hope that you took away that, took away all that from the talk, and we hope you enjoyed the talk. Sally? Oops. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> um, before we conclude, I'd like to thank the OpenTelemetry community uh, for um, doing all of this work, for making exemplars possible, um, and having all of this, uh, this support in the various languages that are available. Um, uh, it's, it's, it's very difficult to kind of um, explain how much work is uh, being done behind the scenes to make all of this happen for you out of the box. So huge thank you to the OpenTelemetry community for um, making all of this uh, available. Um, some exemplars of uh, some folks that um, helped us when we were preparing this talk um, from the Python SIG, um, Clayton Chen and Aaron Abbott, they helped us answer some questions um, about exemplars. Um, also on the Go SIG, uh, David Ashpole and Tyler Han also were really helpful um, when, um, when we had some questions. Also, Alita Sharma for um, championing um, open telemetry at Apple. So thank you, Alita. And last but not least, you for attending this talk, for, for learning about exemplars and, and trying to improve uh, observability around the world. So thank you. Um, and um, we'd like to also link some, some more resources here. So if you want to learn more about open telemetry, the website is here. Um, the demo that we used at the beginning of this talk is available as a GitHub repo. You can clone it, test it out, play around with everything, learn more about how the spans are set up and all the different ways that the uh, languages are used to create the telemetry types. Huge thank you to the demo uh, project maintainers for setting this up. I actually didn't have to do a lot of work to to enable exemplars because, like I said, it's just going up out of the box. I just needed to configure some things in the back end to, to make it visible. Um, there's also this uh, OTEL specification repo, which was immensely valuable when I was preparing this talk and learning how exemplars worked under the hood. Um, if you're interested in more talks about open telemetry, there's this blog post from their um, website that has all of these other talks. And then finally, the white paper, which has a bunch of more details about observability in general. And um, also, we're hiring. So if you're interested in any of the things that we just talked about and want to get paid to do it, work, work with us. <laughs> and uh, yes, uh, if you have questions, there's mics uh, on the sides here. We'd love to answer them. And um, yeah, thank you. Hello. Yeah, Hi. Hey. Uh, thanks for the talk. Uh, I think I had one question. Uh, yeah. How do you handle cases where the traffic is very low, so you may not capture uh, those data points, and you may, for example, miss certain samples? I think it, because you are uh, basically sampling with exemplars, so that may lead to issues sometime, right, to capture things which are important but may not be captured in the samples. Yeah, so I think the question is, how do you capture exemplars for um, requests that don't happen very often? Is that OK? Yeah. So um, inside of OpenTelemetry, there are these uh, settings that you can set. Um, one of them is like the uh, how, like what is the sampling policy for exemplars? Should you always have it enabled? Should it be trace-based? Should it be off? Um, those are settings that you can set uh, per service. So you could, you could set that to be always on. For example, if you know that your service is um, 
not going to be receiving a lot of requests, you can set always on. Um, the other thing is, uh, if you set it to trace based, you can you can configure the uh, uh, trace poly uh, the, the trace uh, sampling rate to be higher because you know that uh, um, you know there's not going to be a lot of requests and. Uh, uh, if you want to be able to capture more of those traces that happen, then that's one thing you can do. OK, thank you. You're welcome. Um, hi. Uh, I have the opposite question. Um, yeah. What would we do in cases where uh, the volume is so high that it's actually beneficial to sample the logs so that uh, we may not have all of the information um, available for the exemplar? Is that something that we uh, consider? So let me repeat the question. So the question is, what happens if you have um, uh, too many requests coming in and you, you want to sample by logs? Is that the question? Yeah. OK. Um, and, and you want to be able to, like, what would you? What? Well, so the, the question is, um, in, in that case, you may no longer have a log attached to your exemplar. but. Um, is there a way that we could um, unite, OK, what is being sampled so that I am always sampling the same log with the same trace? So if you same log and the same trace. So you, you want to be able to log just the things that you care about? Is that? Uh, or so I, I want to make sure that um, the sampling is applied consistently. Uh -huh. So that um, for a request, I am either uh, not sampling everything, or I'm getting both the log and the trace. Um, I'm not sure if I understand okay. the question. You can well, let's thanks. let's so talk, talk after. Yeah, yeah I think we can talk a little bit more. Hi, thanks for for the presentation. Um, I have a question. How do you troubleshoot exemplars? In other words, your log shows a trace ID. Yeah. But you can ask him to map it up in Grafana. How, where do you go to dig out what a problem might be? Sorry, I didn't hear the last part. Wait, OK, so you have your trace ID in your logs, right? Yeah. But you can, it's not showing up when you click the link in, your, um, in Grafana. Uh -huh. how, do you, how do you figure out where the problem is? Oh, how do you figure out how what the problem is? How do you troubleshoot that, yes. So um, like, how do you figure out, OK, let me repeat the question. So how do you figure out what the problem is from the logs that Showed up from that exemplar linking from that trace to that logs? No, I have a trace ID in my logs, right? So when I click on Jager and I search, it doesn't show up. But I know it's in the logs. How do I connect those dots? That's what I'm trying to understand. Uh, <laughs> so, oh, okay, let me, let me go back to the uh, slide with the logs right. here. Um, are you talking about this slide? Something like that, yeah. So you have your trace ID, yeah, and it's supposed to link to the logs there, but it's not showing up. Oh, okay. So you have your trace, but then the error message for the trace isn't showing up. Is that your yeah? You, you have a trace ID. The trace ID number shows up, but when you search, nothing pulls up in the next uh, in, in the right screen. Okay. How do you? Yeah. Oh, okay. So if your logs aren't showing up for the error message, that usually means that that log never got. Um, uh, recorded with that trace ID. Okay. Um, so usually if, there, if you um, instrument with OpenTelemetry and you have all of the, the contexts uh, set up properly, um, when you're configuring the logging handler and then do the log, when you pass in the context, um, usually the trace ID should be registered as part of that log line. And yeah, I'm using Grafana tools, and I think I have all oh, okay. the exemplars so enabled. Uh, these are all Grafana, Tempo, uh, Loki, and Murmur. But I'm, I'm missing that link. At, you know, the, the, something's missing. Yeah, so um, I'm not sure about all of those various backends uh, okay. for, for logs. Um, we just happened to pick some open source okay. off-the-shelf components that worked. Um, but if, if we go back to the, um, yeah, if we go back to that section where I was configuring the tracing backend here yeah. um, with the query to use, okay. let's say you have some other thing that you were uh, using for that trace ID, maybe some, some user uh, username or something like that. You, know? um, you can use that instead when you're querying the logging backend um, to be able to find more information about okay. that request. Thank you. 
uh, in the exemplars, can we try like DevOps, attach DevOps events, right? Like where a new application version was deployed. You don't see it in the log traces themselves. It'll be in the CI CD logs. Is it possible to have that dot which says that version two was deployed or in your case, configuration two was deployed? So, is, is, so the question is, um, how do I integrate this with CI CD so that I can know when version two is deployed? Yeah, yeah. it shows the, you see the metrics latency increase uh, oh, I see. Right, but you see the dot which says that, oh, version two was deployed okay. around that same time. Yeah, so how would you be able to figure out, okay, um, a latency spike happens. Um, how do I know if like, it's related to a new release that's happened? That no, can we show the dot which oh. says that version two was deployed, version three was deployed. Those dots show up. Oh, okay, same. you're talking about annotations in Grafana? Like yeah, yeah. Those? Yeah, what yeah. about? So the, oh, so you use something else, not exemplars for. What are you saying? Are you asking? Should I use something else in that it case? Exemplars have a way uh, for you. It, exemplars don't necessarily have to be traces. They can be other um, identifiers that uh, identify what um, that log, the metric, right? So if you want, you can also use a version ID in that case to um, tag your exemplar with that instead of a trace or with a trace. Okay, got it. Thanks. Hi, um, I, I was looking through the documentation and exemplars are tagged as experimental and it's all like opt-in to enable it. Are, is there a plan to make it on by default like in the medium term or is it still a more of a opt-in thing? Okay. So the, the question is uh, exemplars and the documentation is still considered experimental. Is there a plan to make it not experimental? Yeah. Is, it, is this documentation you're referring to on Prometheus? Uh, yeah, doc? yeah, for Prometheus. Grafana seems to have it in the UI by default. You just have to configure it. But the Prometheus, you add those two flags to enable like manually. Yeah. So um, in Prometheus 3.0, OTLP is actually enabled by default, uh, which is coming out soon. Um, so you don't need to worry about enabling that flag. But since it's not out yet and most people aren't testing it out, mm -hmm. I would just figured I'd mention that you should, need, you should enable that flag for OTLP. Um, for exemplars, um, it's been around for really a long time. It's just marked as experimental because they don't want to say something is like <laughs> super stable and then people start to complain. Um, but we haven't really had any issues using it at um, a super large scale. Um, and um, I mean, I did file or fix a bug uh, in Prometheus for uh, exemplars, but um, it seems to work pretty well. I don't think there's a huge issue. There, Maybe some consideration is there is an overhead um, mm -hmm. when you are using exemplars. There's like, I think, if you're just storing the trace ID with that exemplar, it's about 100 bytes um, per exemplar. And I think the default setting in Prometheus is to have 100,000 um, exemplars um, as a limit. And uh, if you store more than that amount, the oldest one just gets discarded mm -hmm. because under the, under the hood, it's uh, implemented as a circular buffer. So if you keep trying to send exemplars in there, it'll just discard um, the oldest one that you, know, you sent in earliest. Um, OK, OK, thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. I think we are out of time. So thank you all for coming. Thank you all. Um,